Hello everyone and welcome to the Erie County District Attorney YouTube video that we do uh, pretty much every week here uh, to talk about various items that are going on uh, here in Erie County, uh, the city of Buffalo, uh, the state, and quite frankly this country uh, regarding criminal justice issues. Uh, today, um, you know, I, I'm going to do something that, uh, uh, you know, I, 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 I'm, I'm very honored obviously to talk about this and, and you know, while, you know, it, it, it kind of is a little bit, uh, you know, a little bit much to, to, to focus on yourself or talk about yourself, uh, in, in my opinion. Uh, I'm going to do it anyway. Uh, and I'm going to talk about uh, the, the recent honor that I have received uh, in being elected uh, president of the National District Attorneys Association. The uh, National District Attorneys Association, or as we call it, NDAA, uh, is the organization that represents uh, all 10,000 prosecutors uh, in this country. Uh, it is an association made up uh, of the elected district attorneys across the country, uh, whether they're called district attorneys or state attorneys or commonwealth attorneys or county attorneys. Uh, again, they all have different names uh, uh, across the country, but uh, generically, we are all district attorneys uh, and that is the name of our association, uh, you know, the National District Attorney Association. So, uh, you know, we, our organization, like I said, represents all of the elected district attorneys and all of the uh, uh, assistant district, district attorneys and lawyers uh, who are associate members of our organization uh, who work across this country. And there are about 10,000 prosecutors uh, in the United States. And as the president of the National District Attorneys Association, uh, I had the honor to represent all of them uh, and to lead this great organization. Uh, I was uh, elected president uh, at our annual summer conference in Denver, Colorado, uh, which we just had uh, here uh, uh, last week. Um, we, uh, uh, NDAA has a summer conference every year. Uh, in July, and at our summer conference in July, that is when we elect the officers of our association. Uh, so uh, on uh, July 17th, uh, at the what they call the Pass the Gavel Ceremony, which I, I have here the gavel that I received uh, uh, at, that, uh, at that ceremony. Uh, on, um, that ceremony was actually on July 18th. Um, I was, um, I became the president of this uh, great association. And, you know, I said in my remarks when I became the president uh, at the summer conference luncheon, you know, I said I wanted to, to do two things. Uh, first, I wanted to enhance uh, the training that is kind of the bread and butter and foundation of our organization. Uh, you know, we, we have, uh, the NDAA is known for its training and quite frankly for its excellent training that we put on across the country uh, in different cities, different venues uh, throughout the year. Whether it's how to try a DWI, how to try a homicide, whether it's about DNA evidence, um, uh, cross-examining witnesses. I mean, you name the subject and we do training on it. And so we are training prosecutors across the country through our great organization. One of the ideas that we had pre-COVID was to start a regional training um, uh, format across the country and, and, and have one day of training in like the Southwest where everyone from the Southwest could, could come for a few days and have like a regional training and talk about a variety of topics and then do one in the Northeast and then do one in the South. Uh, it's a great idea. Uh, we started to get it formulated and then COVID hit uh, and then it kind of got put on hold. Well, now that we're, you know, out of COVID or coming out of COVID, depending on how you want to look at it, um, uh, I want to get that regional training uh, uh, idea kind of back on the, you know, uh, up and running. And so that's one of the things that uh, I'm going to do with my presidency. The second thing I'm going to do is, you know, I'm going to get the message out about who we are as prosecutors and what we do. As we all know, over the course of the past two years, law enforcement has taken some hits and we're kind of, you know, back on our heels a little bit. Uh, and prosecutors are, are getting included in that narrative. <clears throat> it's unfair. And I'm gonna push back and I'm gonna fight back because prosecutors uh, 
we're the white hat. We are the good guys. Every day we do the right thing and we have been doing the right thing for years and years. And that message needs to get out there. <clears throat> what, what people need to understand is that the least busiest prosecutor in my office will exonerate more people in a month than any criminal defense attorney will in their lifetime. I want you to think about that and have that sink in. We will, my people, will exonerate more individuals in a month than any criminal lawyer will in their lifetime. That's what we do every day. We give people second, third, fourth chances every day. This myth that all we want to do is put people in jail is false. It is not true. And that message needs to get out there. And I have a year to do that. And I will. So to all the prosecutors out there uh, in this country who are watching this YouTube video, thank you. Thank you for what you do each and every day and know that you have a champion for justice and a champion to fight your cause. I'll see you next week.